Injection molding is a manufacturing process for producing parts by injecting molten material into a mold. We will begin by operating a small prototype Morgan Press injection molder located in the lab. This injection molder will be used to make the rotary handle in the Geneva Wheel Class project. We will need two forms of personal protective equipment when operating the injection molder, safety glasses and gloves. Remember that the nozzle, the mold, and the injection molded part will be hot. We'll start by taking an overall look at the Morgan Press injection molding machine. Here we have the main control panel, the toggle clamp linkage, the temperature data chart, mold preheating plate, the mold itself, the injection nozzle, which mates to the mold sprue, the table guard, the clamp force and injection pressure gauges, the material loading chute, the toggle clamp height adjustment, and finally, the ram power return. This is the mold we will be using. It is a multi-part mold with six cavities to make six handles per properly executed injection event. Note the alignment pins in the mold. These pins ensure that the mold bottom and top align correctly when clamped. The runners distribute the material to each mold cavity from the sprue. The sprue is located on the top half of the mold. This is where the nozzle will inject the thermoplastic into the mold. Let's take a closer look at the control panel. First we have the clamp control knob. The clamp control knob controls the raising and lowering of the mold plate. The safety latch needs to be rotated out of the way before use. Pushing the knob in will clamp the mold while pulling the knob back will unclamp the mold. Let's watch as we activate and deactivate the clamp control knob. To the right is the clamp force selector, which regulates the air pressure to the clamp control valve. This controls the mold's clamp force. The amount of clamp force can be seen on this gauge at the top of the machine. Next is the cycle timer knob. This knob is used to limit the amount of injection time. The pilot pressure selector regulates the air pressure to the injection control valve. This controls the injection pressure. The injection pressure can be seen on this gauge at the top of the machine. On the far right is the injection control knob. The injection control knob controls the raising and lowering of the piston which causes an injection event. The safety latch needs to be rotated out of the way before use. Pushing the knob in will begin an injection event, while pulling the knob back will end the injection event. Around the corner on the right is the ram return knob. Pushing this knob intermittently will return the piston back to the top of its stroke. This is only necessary if the piston does not return on its own after an injection event. To ensure that the mold clamps properly, the height of the clamping table will need to be set so that the clamping linkage goes fully over center at the end of the clamp stroke. The material loading chute is where the plastic pellets will be inserted. These pellets will be melted down and injected into our mold. The material loading chute gate will need to be closed in order to inject material into the mold. There's a chart located on the front of the machine which has suggested temperature settings for different thermoplastics. The settings are a good starting point, but may need to be modified based on the specific material being used. We will be using high impact nylon for our Geneva wheel handles. These settings are denoted by the red star. The mold preheat plate keeps the mold warm. This prevents the thermoplastic from solidifying too early due to being injected into a mold with a large temperature differential. Here, we have the mold preheater set to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Here the barrel zone temperature controller is shown on the top, while the nozzle zone temperature controller is shown on the bottom. The numbers in red are the current temperature, while the numbers in green are the set temperature. You can see that in this current photo, the barrel and the nozzle 
are still heating up to temperature. In the new photo, we can see that the barrel and nozzle are up to temperature and ready for injecting. Since nylon tends to absorb moisture from the air, we bake the nylon pellets at above the boiling temperature of water to rid the nylon of any absorbed moisture. Here, we load the hopper or material chute with the nylon pellets. We need to make sure to shut the material chute gate before injecting the thermoplastic into the mold. It will take some time for the material to heat up in the injection barrel. For this particular part and material, somewhere around two to three minutes is appropriate. We will need to wait this time after every one to two injection cycles. Here we go through our first injection event. It is common for the first couple of injection events to produce less than perfect parts. There may be some leftover material in the barrel, which has become contaminated or absorbed moisture from the air. We need to make sure that the mold guard is pulled down over the mold table completely or the injection molder will not function. We now clamp the mold table by pushing the orange clamp control knob. After the mold table rises and the clamp linkage snaps over center, we are ready to inject the thermoplastic. We press the black injection control knob and hold it until the injection is complete, then pull it back into the neutral position. We wait a second or two until we pull the orange clamp control knob to unclamp the mold. We use needle nose pliers to carefully remove the hot part from the mold. In this case we have an underfill, which means that our mold did not fill completely. There are some usable parts, but not all of the parts are usable. This can be due to many factors such as barrel and nozzle temperature, mold temperature, injection time, injection pressure, too little material in the material chute, cycle time, and or time between injection events. We'll try again. We wait a minute or two for the material to heat up in the barrel. We repeat the same process as before, but this time the injection pressure will be increased. In the end, we have an overfill, which results in flash around the parts. Flash is the extra material that crept into the mating surfaces of the mold. There are some usable parts, but again, not all of them are usable. This can be due to many factors such as barrel and nozzle temperature, mold temperature, injection time, injection pressure, and or the cycle time. We will now repeat the process with the proper injection pressure. For this mold, an injection pressure of about 60 to 65 psi on the green gauge works very well. This time, we get a full fill in the mold with no flashing. This is what we want to try to accomplish on every injection cycle. Here we see our finished parts. Each part will snap off the runner in which it's connected to. These parts are ready for post-machining.